I, 25 male, feel deeply betrayed by my girlfriend, 24 female. We met three years ago at a party of a mutual friend. Once we were introduced, we ended up spending the entire rest of the party just sitting and talking to one another. It really felt like we were the only two people there. And as the night ended, she told me that she really enjoyed talking to me and asked me for my number, which was a first for me. I awoke the next morning to a text from her telling me how much she enjoyed talking with me and wanted to know if I would be interested in getting together to talk some more. I agreed, and that next weekend, we met at a local bookstore coffee house where we proceeded to spend five hours talking until the shop kicked us out because they were closing. Not once in either of the conversations did we talk about anything romantic or love or anything like that. It was everything from philosophy to economics to religion and everything in between. Once again, she tells me she has had a great time and asks if we can do this again. We set a time for the next weekend and same exact thing happens again. This goes on for three more times and I am very confused as to what this is. Are we just friends getting together to talk? Is this going anywhere else? I had no idea. She sends me a text that week prior to meeting telling me that I am the easiest person she has ever talked to and that she feels totally comfortable and safe being with me. So finally, at the end of the next day, when she says she wants to do this again, I just said that I was curious as to what she considered these times together as, I asked if we are just friends or was there a possibility of being more? She said that she really enjoyed our time together and would like to see where it goes. Next time we are together as we are talking. I kind of reached out and took her hand and we held hands for the first time for several minutes. I tell her at the end of this night that next time I would like to do something different with her and took her to the movies. Things went well, and during the movie, I put my arm around her, and she laid her head on my shoulder. As we parted that night, I gathered up my courage and leaned in to give her a kiss goodnight. Her response was not what I expected. She actually withdrew from my attempt, and I immediately apologized to her and felt like a total heel. She said that I didn't need to apologize, but she was just a little shocked as she wasn't expecting it. I quickly apologized again and withdrew for the night embarrassed beyond belief. She texted me the very next day saying she was sorry about the night before. She really liked me and wants to move that direction in our relationship, but she wanted to take things slow. I replied, saying that I was willing to go at whatever speed she wanted and again apologized because I felt really bad. Now mind you while I said I was willing to go at her speed, and I was, but I was really confused by what taking it slow meant. We had been seeing each other once a week for hours at a time for over two months, but being very inexperienced in the relationship game, only had a GF in high school and went out on dates in college, but mostly as friends and nothing ever lasted, I just thought I would let her take the lead. We went out two more times, and then at the beginning of our next date, she actually greeted me with kiss. From there, our relationship advanced at what I consider a normal pace. A year and a half later, we were living together and IMO, everything was going great. That is until two weeks ago, she had to pick me up at my work because my car was in the shop. She pulled up and was sitting in the car, and one of my co-workers, who I'm friendly with, came out with me as he was leaving at the same time. I introduced them from a distance, but clearly within view of each other. They wave hello, and we left. The next day I came back, and he said he wanted to make sure there wasn't going to be a problem between the two of us. I asked him why would there be, and he said, she didn't say anything to you. I said she did not, and he said, well, it was a couple of years ago, so she may not even remember him. And then he proceeds to tell me that they matched up on Tinder and would hook up with each other. And it went on for a few months before we started dating his current girlfriend. I told him that it might have been a different person, and he then proceeds to show me her Tinder profile. I've never used the site before, so I wasn't sure how to look at anything but he said it does not look like she is active on there now and hasn't been for a while. But the fact of the matter was that for sure it was her. And to make matters worse, I didn't tell him this, but the time frame that he was saying was also some of the same time we were together in the beginning. The times I was rebuked for leaning in for a kiss and quit possibly even after this. He could tell this was bothering me and he apologized, but said that I needed to know that they were never dating or anything. It was just getting together to have sex as though I was supposed to be okay with that. He didn't want to say much else, but he said that I should know that he knows for a fact that he wasn't the only one. Needless to say, this all upset me greatly, but I didn't know what to do or how to handle this. It was eating away at me, 
and I did something I probably shouldn't have done, but we share an Outlook calendar and have for over a year so that we can plan our events. While she was gone, I looked at her laptop and found her Outlook, which was nothing more than what we shared. However, I noticed she had a separate calendar and it was not password protected. I went back on her calendar, even though I knew it was wrong, and sure as shit there was his first name and yes, for fact, some of those dates were after we were already past the getting to know you stage. But wait, there's more. Not only was his name there, but there were several other guys' names. There were weeks where she had a different name on every day of the week and twice had two names on weekend days. What made me the sickest of all though, was looking at the weeks where we were early on in our relationship, when I had to basically be afraid to hold her hand, that she was meeting with other guys that week, and even one time earlier in the day when we met. How do I know this, you might ask? My name was on there as well. Now it does appear that about five months after we started dating, the names mostly stopped, and by a year in there were no more names. But what really sucks is that one guy's name is on there more than others. And this is a guy who she has brought to our house on more than one occasion and introduced us. She has never once told me that they were ever sexual partners. In fact, that is what kind of pisses me off about all of this. Frankly, if I didn't know any of this, I would tell you she was a prude. Sex is very vanilla and I always have to initiate it. However, she just told me not more than a month ago that she feels like I am her soulmate and she loves me with all of her heart. This is causing me a lot of pain to be honest. I don't think I can live with this. The fact that I had to wait for months to even kiss and hold hands while all along she was getting sex from a variety of people makes me feel like absolute shit. The fact that I honestly was beating myself up after trying for a kiss really pisses me off. Then there is a part of me that says I'm not good enough. Sure, she may enjoy my personality or whatever, but obviously I am not attractive enough for her to want to be with me early on really bothers me. I mean, it would be one thing if she did all of this before we met, but there are names marked clearly after we were involved just before we moved in together, including the guy I work with. I have yet to confront her. I don't know what I'm going to do or say. There is a very large part of me that just wants out of this. I feel like she is not the person she portrayed herself to be. Oh, believe me, she is a very judgmental person and has tons of opinions and comes across as holier than thou, even though she is not religious per se. Has anyone else ever had to deal with this? Update one. After thinking about this a lot, I decided that if everything was true, I didn't believe I could live with it. From my point of view, not only did it change the entire basically first year of our relationship, it fundamentally changed who I thought she was. I mean, we can all have different ways we react around people, but there are some things you can't just be one way one day and one way another day. One, just because the names were there, it doesn't necessarily mean she was sleeping with or even dating those guys. As was said, my name was in there and we sure as hell weren't having sex during a lot of these times. Two, leaving without at least giving her a chance to explain things seemed wrong as well, which led to the dilemma I faced. How do I tell her I know about all of these names? As a reminder, I snooped. I certainly could just tell her about my coworker, but how would I know about all of the other names? So I just basically decided to tell her about the coworker and see what happened from there. This was the most unpleasant conversation I've ever had. Because on top of everything the GF I've had has been great, we've never fought or had even a hint of disagreement or betrayal. I love who I thought she was. So I couldn't just bail without at least talking about it. She acted like she didn't know my coworker. She acted like she was shocked he would say this and said honestly she didn't remember him. At first I was buying everything she was selling because I wanted to and also because she was very convincing. However, I showed her the Tinder profile and she started to get a little defensive. She said yes, she had Tinder at one time but hasn't been on it for years, which according to my coworker was true. So I was going to drop it and just go on, but at the last minute I said to her, he told me the dates you went out and how it crossed times with when you and I were together, to which she said he was lying because it ended well before we became a couple. That's when I knew she was lying. She had told me that she didn't recognize him, but when confronted with timeline, she now claimed to know him and said timeline was wrong. When I pointed out her logical flaw to her, she became frustrated and started crying. My initial response was to comfort her, but midway through doing that, I decided that she might very well be doing this to manipulate me and said that while I was there for her, I wanted to know the truth and this is where I sort of lied to her. I told her he provided me with in-depth timeline and showed me dates on his calendar. She said she honestly did not know when, but she thought it was over before we became a couple. 
This is when I made my mistake of asking when did she consider us a couple. She said she considered us a couple when we moved in together. Let me remind everyone we were seeing each other for almost two years before we moved in together. So I asked her during that time frame if she had dated anyone else. She was emphatic that she didn't date anyone at all. So I know it was crude, but I just came out and said, okay, maybe not date anyone, but did you have sex with anyone? She didn't answer me and I knew my answer. By this time she is crying uncontrollably telling me how much she loved me, how everything was way in the past, etc., etc. I decided to give her a break before I confronted her because she legitimately was hyperventilating. Once she calmed down, I just said I knew about the guy who she brought to our house as well. This one was obviously a subject she was dreading because she went from crying hysterically to pale as a ghost. At this point, she starts trying to apologize and says that none of the other guys have ever meant anything to her and that I am the love of her life. I told her that the only way I would even consider working through this would be for her to come clean 100% right there and then and I kind of let her know that I already know other things and would tell how I know if I have to. This was the one thing I now regret because she just flat out told me everything, things I never in a million years wanted to know, including confirming that yes, she met with Tinder dates twice on days we met later in the evening. She said she did not consider us official and we hadn't even really said what we were doing was dating with those two times. Date-wise, she is correct from the standpoint that this was before we kissed. Anyway, I told her I needed time to think about it and told her I was going to stay with a friend. She begged me not to go. She very legitimately was upset and said none of this was meant to hurt me. She didn't understand why I was so upset about the stuff from before we met, but said she sees why I would be upset about things that happened after we met. I left to stay with a friend, but I agreed to keep the line of communications open. She sent me a very long emotional text the next morning, explaining how as a teenager, she never respected herself and used sex to validate herself and that she had never understood what a real relationship was or what love was until she met me. It was very long and detailed, but that was the gist of it. I responded that I thanked her for her honesty, but I laid out how her making me wait and more to the point, making me feel like a creep for just trying to reach out and kiss her while she was getting screwed by any number of guys was very hurtful to me and frankly had made me doubt myself as a man and absolutely destroyed any romantic notions I had of our relationship. She did not respond to my text, so I could not decide if she was upset or mad at me. But a half hour later, my friend tells me she is at the door and she is very emotional. Did I want him to let her see me? I went to the door and she immediately begins crying harder than I've ever seen anyone cry. She couldn't even talk. She kept trying, but it made no sense. I got her to sit down and she threw herself at me trying to hug me. After she calmed down a little, she finally got out that she was so sorry. She never meant to hurt me. Eventually, after quite some time, she calmed down enough to talk and she let it be known that what I wrote to her was heartbreaking. She never even considered it that way. She tried to explain that she was so in love with me that she didn't want to mess it up with sex and wanted us to be what she thought we had become. I let her go on, but eventually explained to her that while that may be her point of view, it certainly was not mine. I just went ahead and explained that it made me feel unattractive and less desirable that guys who supposedly meant nothing to her. Well, I went on for a while myself, but I'll spare you the details. I just told her that there was no way for me to go back to what we had because I do not view her as the same person anymore. That knowing that she willingly had sex with other people after she had sex with me was just a deal breaker. She jumped in and said that it never happened after we slept together. She said she would freely admit to sleeping with other guys up until we kissed, but after that night, she knew she loved me and cut everything else out. I have no way of knowing, obviously. Of course, I have no faith in what she said. However, I do have her calendar, and it pretty much does show a rapid slowdown right around that time. I told her I still need time and again. She texted that night with a very emotional letter saying, acknowledging my feelings over this, and told me that the fact she hurt me makes her feel worse than anything, that she would do anything to make this work, swore that she has never and will never cheat on me since she fell in love with me. So I'm still here at my friend's house. I still don't know for sure what I'm going to do. I do love her and I can tell she is not faking this at all. She is an emotional wreck. I've called her family to have them go check on her, just told them we were having a rough time and would prefer to not answer anything else at the time. 
I again want to stress this because I don't think it came across in my first story. Her personality does not show any of this at all. In fact, she is quit judgmental about people who do what she did. She never said she was a virgin BTW, so let's not go that far. But she absolutely led me to believe she only believed in sex in the confines of a relationship. That is now a confirmed lie. I'm supposed to meet her Friday. I'm not sure if I will or won't. Update two. Thursday later afternoon, I met with a friend who knew of her but had never met her. I wanted someone with a complete fresh perspective and outside voice. In other words, someone who didn't know her or had formed an opinion of her. I explained everything that I wrote in the first two stories and just asked his opinion. He said that he wasn't going to give an opinion because he and I were not alike, but what he would do is ask me to consider some questions. Would I have pursued her if I knew she was actively having sex with multiple partners? Would I have willingly continued the relationship early on if I knew that she was coming on obvious dates with me but having sex with multiple partners? Knowing now what I didn't know then, do I see her as the same person who I dated, fell in love with and moved in together? Did I see a future with her where I would have an unconditional, trusting, loving relationship with her? He had other questions as well, but none were more or as important as these. I don't know why, but these questions made it crystal clear what my thoughts were and what I had to do. It doesn't mean it was easy, nor did I like it. On Friday, I took the day off of work and two of my friends came with me. And while she was at work, I packed up everything that was mine from our apartment and moved it to storage. Fortunately, I don't own that much and decided that anything we bought together, I would leave at the apartment with her. Fortunately, we are already out of our lease and we're just renting month to month, so there is no long-term financial issue for me. But I did not want to be unfair, so I went to my savings and drew out six months of what would have been my part of the rent. She got home from work at around 5.30 and when she came in, she immediately saw my stuff was gone and she dropped her bag on the floor and sat on the couch and started crying. This was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life and I ended up crying almost as much as she did. I just explained to her that she did not deserve to be with someone who had any doubts about her or had anything but a total positive image of who she is. I told her that I had to work on myself because in talking with my friend and reading on here, I found out that a lot of my ideas around sex and relationships are not in line with today's thinking, and I know I have to somehow get past that. I am certain she will be far better off without me, because at the end of the day, I just can't be who she needs me to be. Wish I could. Wish I could just view it as no big deal, but I do. Anyway, I stayed as long as it made sense to try and comfort her, but at the end of the day, I was not doing it, so I left her curled up on the couch in tears. This certainly did not end how I thought or hoped it would, but at the end of the day, we both are very young and life is too short. She will easily find a new guy and I am going to work on myself and see if I can't grow from this. Also, before I go, I do want to respond to what several people had said about my coworker, who is the one who started all of this. Obviously, I will never know his true motivation. He could just be a troublemaker, as some have stated, and I'll never know. However, my belief is that he was afraid she said something and did not want there to be an issue between us at work by both of their accounts, he is the one who cut it off with her to date the girl he is with now. So while it could be jealousy or whatever, I kind of doubt it. If he wanted to be with her, I think he probably still could have been because he ended whatever their relationship was.